navigating toxic guilt during the holidays. There are going to be a lot of emotions that come up when you are coming up on the holidays, when you have a narcissistic mother, whether you are no contact with her, whether you have low contact with her. These are the types of times where people will get together, family, friends, and everyone just asks questions. Everyone wants to know, everyone prize. So it's really important to be able to navigate the emotions that come with it. And one of the big ones is toxic guilt. And I call it toxic guilt because guilt is on the spectrum. Daughters of narcissistic mothers tend to experience toxic guilt, which essentially is guilt interlaced with shame. So if they set boundaries or if they have needs or if they advocate for themselves, they feel guilty. They feel guilty for putting themselves first. They feel guilty because they are acknowledging their needs. And this toxic guilt feels unbearable. And it makes sense. This is this was programmed from a very young age and it's laced with toxic shame. So daughters of narcissistic mothers, instead of feeling guilty for doing something wrong, they believe that if they do something that has to do with taking care of themselves or their needs or setting boundaries, they're doing something wrong. But because they're doing something wrong, they immediately are bad people when that's not the reality. Guilt is a good thing when it's healthy guilt. But when it's toxic guilt, it becomes very pervasive and it stops daughters from getting a lot of things done. It stops them from doing things, from setting boundaries, from advocating for themselves. So hopefully you're able to take some of these tips to help you with that toxic guilt during the holidays. So daughters of narcissistic mothers have a hard time with a pervasive sense of toxic guilt. And it comes from a deeply ingrained belief that them having needs is inherently wrong. Why? Why is it wrong? Because they were programmed that way. They were taught to believe that having needs, having autonomy, having joy, happy happiness was wrong. Because it was taken away from their mothers. Because narcissistic mothers, it's all about their needs. And the mindset is like winner loser. So if mom can't have her needs, then she is a loser. If her daughter has her needs, then she is the winner. So of course, the mother has to make the daughter the loser. And because of that, the daughter feels like having needs is wrong. When well, that's not the reality. It's just the programming that they were brought up on. So because of this, they believe that simply expressing their needs casts them as bad individuals. And this feeling of badness becomes entrenched in their psyche. And it's really hard to overcome, but it's not to say that it's not possible. When it comes to doing this work, you have to come from a place of gradual baby steps, not all or nothing, because all or nothing type of thinking is what's going to keep you stuck. You're going to try, fall back down, get back up, try, fall back down, get back up. And eventually you done that so much that you get to a place where like, okay, I'm content. I don't feel as guilty. I don't feel as bad. And I am advocating for myself. So it takes gradual steps to get past this. Narcissistic mothers who focus on their needs teach their daughters that having needs is selfish. So of course, when they start to advocate for themselves, they feel very guilty. So they end up suppressing their own needs. And this follows them into adulthood until they become aware of it and start tackling it head on, not running away from it. Because I do get a lot of questions that are like, how do I do this without feeling guilty? There's no way to go around guilt. There's no way around to go around the pain. It's about acknowledging it. It's about making space and acceptance for what needs to be felt. And some daughters were also raised by mothers who adopt like a very self-sacrificial and over-involved approach. And they carry a lot of toxic guilt because they feel responsible for all the sacrifices their mothers made in raising them. What you need to understand about motherhood, it is a selfless job. It should be. And a lot of mothers are good enough mothers. But when it comes to narcissistic mothers, they are egocentric. So it's about them. They make motherhood about them too. And they make their kids make it about them too. So they believe that everything that they're doing for the kids are actually sacrifices when the reality, that's like what you're supposed to do as a mother. There's going to be sacrificial parts of the role and it's not supposed to be put onto their children because they chose to have their own children. So what does toxic look like? What does it feel like? Well, one of the big ones is feeling accountable for your mother's emotions and needs. Like it's your responsibility that she feels okay. You're hypersensitive about how she feels and you may tend to try to fix things for her or try to control things for her. But it's important to recognize that this is guilt. This isn't coming from a good place. This is coming from a place of like you feel responsible for your mother. And in reality, you're only you could only be responsible for yourself and your mother can be responsible for herself. Uh, toxic guilt also makes you feel responsible 
for the abuse that wasn't your fault. You might feel that maybe it wasn't that bad or that the abuse was somehow because of your fault, because you were a tough kid to deal with. Uh, you were just really hard on your mother. But the reality is like the onus falls on the parents when it comes to raising their children. The responsibility falls as them when they're children. So whatever was done to you is not your fault. A tendency to prioritize other people's needs over your own, which could look like which is people pleasing behavior. And this looks like self-sacrifice, excessive empathy, and neglecting your own feelings. Toxic guilt like could look like engaging in a self-doubt loop. Despite knowing what steps are necessary for you to heal and detach from your mother, that toxic guilt keeps you trapped. Should I do this? Am I okay with doing this? Like, am I a bad person? Am I a selfish daughter for doing this? Am I a, such a terrible person? Maybe it wasn't that bad. So you go through the sloop of self-doubt, which undermines a conviction to move forward. But hopefully since you're here, this will help you progress when it comes to toxic guilt. When it comes to toxic guilt, you may tend to excessively self-blame yourself. It's a pattern. You are always a problem in your relationships and your work. And it's a reflex to blame yourself first, enter entertaining that if only you knew better, these things wouldn't happen. Or if you would have done this or this or this or this or taking this step, this wouldn't have happened. That's my fault. I'm stupid. Why did I do that? It's a pattern. That's what toxic guilt looks like. So somebody who has toxic guilt may have low self-esteem. They feel a strong sense of responsibility for others. They repress their needs. They have no boundaries or very weak boundaries, and they excessively depend on the approval of others, driven by the strong desire to be liked or perceived as good. Especially number five, that belief has to be detached because if you're driven by the strong desire to be perceived as good, then it's going to be very challenging to heal. So let's look at the connection between toxic guilt and your relationship with your mother. You find yourself prioritizing your mother's needs to the extent that you drop everything because you feel really guilty if you don't. If you're busy, do you feel compelled to call your mother every day? Because if you don't, you're this horrible daughter. If your mother's experiencing emotional distress, like she's stressed out, upset, anxious, do you find yourself mirroring these feelings? When your mother encounters a problem, do you feel like you have to solve that problem for her? Are your mother's values, beliefs, wishes, and needs consistently taking precedence over yours and your decision making? And this all has to do with toxic guilt. If you don't do any of this, do you feel like intense guilt? That's toxic guilt. So here are some reflections that you could take a look at. Make sure that you have a pen and paper. You could do it now or you could reflect on these later if you want. How do you tend to navigate setting boundaries with your mother and what challenges do you face in doing so? In what ways do you notice emotional dependency on your mother's approval or well-being influencing your decisions and feelings? Think about a recent problem you encountered. How did you react and did you feel a strong urge to intervene and fix it? Reflect on how you communicate with your mo mother. How often do you reach out? Do you feel obligated? Because if you don't, you're going to be perceived as a bad daughter. Can you think about a specific time when your mother's values or her beliefs or her wishes or her needs to go over precedence over your own? I'm sure you think of a lot. How does this impact your sense of self-worth and reflect on moments where you've experienced toxic guilt in your relationships with your mother? What triggered these feelings and how did you cope with them? So how do we overcome toxic guilt? This is just one way to overcome it, but you don't want to run away from it. You don't want to get away from feeling it because it's going to come going to come. So we tend to do a lot of things to not want to feel these painful emotions. But if we don't, then we can't problem solve from it because we just keep running away and nothing happens. So one of the first things that you want to do is acknowledge and confront your toxic guilt because then you will continue to avoid it and it's going to be triggering and it's going to be painful and it's part of the work. Acknowledge it. And if it helps, this is why we have this community, this group. This is why you have me. Talk to a trusted person about this. This is what I feel really guilty about. You know, I always talk about reality checkers. There's people around you who can check your reality for you and let you know that what you're feeling is valid. And just because you feel guilty doesn't mean you're guilty. Just because you feel like you're a ter terrible person because you don't call your mom every day or you've got no contact, it doesn't make you this bad person. So you need people to check your reality for you, especially if you don't have safe people around you. That's what this community is about. As you're facing your guilt, you're going to have to do something differently. And that means advocating and protecting yourself. You can no longer give in to that guilt because you feel toxic guilt. You know, that's why the boundaries aren't being set. That's why you appease your mother. Uh, that's why you run away from this. So it's important to face the guilt so that you could advocate and protect yourself. And this involves setting boundaries. And if necessary, 
going no contact. And another aspect of this is having a plan. Always, always have a plan. Be prepared for how your mother is going to react. And you may have an idea. You, you've known your mother's patterns for a while, right? You know how she's going to react. So have some ideas to how she might react and have your people there, whether that means support from friends, therapists, coaches, tools to regulate your nervous system, and also this community. As you consistently do this, you will break free from this toxic guilt. You're going to have an understanding as to what makes you feel guilty versus what makes you feel that toxic guilt, that obligation. And eventually you will get to a good place where you could breathe and you gradually re uh, release that toxic guilt. Now, the final step involves accepting and detaching from the potential outcomes. Whether once you start advocating for yourself, setting boundaries, not responding to your mother's needs out of toxic guilt, all that stuff, your mother is going to do what she's going to do. And that means she could give you the silent treatment. She could choose to end the relationship because she can't get supply from you anymore. Or she may use her usual tactics like rage, anger, to have your inner child scared so that you revert back to old behavior. Focus on maintaining your boundaries and advocating for yourself. Use this community. Use your support system because it is going to be unbearable in the beginning. And you need that support to hold you up so that you're able to do it. So here's some questions that we will talk about when it comes to guilt. What do you feel guilty about? Here's an example. I feel guilty because growing up, I was told that I needed to honor my mother. And if I don't, I'm a bad child and I will go to hell. I feel bad because I don't want to be seen as this terrible daughter for not honoring her in the way she wants. And then societal expectations also say that I'm supposed to be a good daughter to my mother. And if I don't want to be a good daughter anymore, and it makes me feel so guilty. What is the reality? Like objectively, you have to look at the situation, take a step back and look at the full picture. The reality is that my mother has a jaded perception of what honoring her means. She thinks it means that I'm supposed to be her servant, have no needs, and worship her like God. The reality is that she isn't God. She is just emotionally mature and continues to use me to meet her needs, even though she's an adult woman and so am I. The reality is that I'm her equal. I'm not a child anymore that she can control. What is your next step? How will you advocate for yourself? My next step is saying no to coming down for the holidays. Anytime I go over to her house, I end up feeling drained. I need to take time for myself so that I can heal and decide what kind of relationship I want with my mother. I will tell her, like, these are actionable steps, okay? So these have to be actionable steps. Thank you, but I will be spending the holidays at home this year. And be prepared. If she tries to guilt or shame me, I will uphold my boundary and use non-emotional language to deal with her responses. I will say this is non-negotiable and leave it as that. Then I will go and do something for myself and regulate. So just take a walk, do some breathing, yoga, etc. And acceptance of results. You got to accept what comes with taking responsibility, which is really what you're doing of your healing. What happens? So what ended up happening when I attempted to advocate for myself, my mother got upset. I know it's hard to understand this, but I am not responsible for how my mother is going to react. She can disagree with my boundary, but I'm still going to enforce it. I accept that my mother may or may not agree. And that is her decision, not mine to deal with. In the end, I will still enforce my boundaries so that I am taken seriously. 